Good, happy Tuesday morning, June 26, 2018. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, man charged with arson, second-degree murder in connection with death of 65-year-old woman. An Exeter man is facing charges in connection with a mobile home fire and the death of a 65-year-old woman. Around 4 a.m. on June 29th, fire officials were called to the Hayes Mobile Home Park for a reported fire. Carla, 65, was found dead inside her mobile home at 66 Hayes Park, officials said. State officials have not released her cause of death. On Monday, Derek Weber, 31, of Exeter, was arrested and charged with second-degree murder and arson in connection with her death. The Attorney General Gordon McDonald said state police, Exeter police, and state fire marshal's office have worked almost around the clock investigating the circumstances of the fire and her death. Investigators from the New Hampshire State Police Major Crime Unit returned Monday to the mobile home park, roping off the street again and suiting up to collect potential evidence. They would only confirm that their presence was part of their follow-up investigation in the case. Investigators and neighbors could not confirm a relationship between Weber and Phil Dees, or whether Weber had ever lived in the mobile home park. One neighbor said that she thought the mobile home was being searched was empty. Weber is scheduled to be arraigned today in Rockingham Superior Court. Officials said no further information will be available until after the arrangement, but investigators did say the Charges could change depending on what they find at the scene. Anyone with information about the fire or Weber's actions and whereabouts between June 18th and June 23rd is asked to call Detective Sergeant Matt of the New Hampshire State Police Major Crime Unit at 603-419. Eight two nine one. Severely intact dog rescued from Braintree home. For years. Brandy, the American Bulldog, had been a friendly dog next door with whom Suzanne would often play and sometimes dog sit when its owners were away. So when Brandy's owner disappeared inside the house with the dog two months ago, coming out only to collect groceries despite at the front door, Suzanne told the Patriot 
ledger, she began to worry. Suzanne, a self-professed crazy dog lover, sent a series of concerned text messages to the neighbor in recent weeks, but when he stopped responding, she decided to go over and check on him. When she knocked on the door Saturday afternoon, she said it swung open and revealed a dog that looked little like the one she knew. The severely intact dog is now being treated at VCA South Shore in Weymouth, where Suzanne is paying for her care with the help of a fundraising page that has already collected more than 7,000 in donations. Braintree police are involved, but not thought charges against the owner, who Deputy Chief Sean Landon said was unable to care for the dog. It's a sad set of circumstances around the whole thing, Landon said Monday. After walking into her neighbor's home on Saturday afternoon, Suzanne said her husband scooped the frail dog into his arms and hurried away while Suzanne explained to the owner that they would take care of her. She said they called 911 after they left and later saw the neighbor leaving in an ambulance. Suzanne said she believes that Brandy was close to death when they found her, but believes she will survive. She has been visiting the dog several times since it was brought to the VA South Shore on Saturday, said Brandy looks happy. Suzanne said the money raised through her fundraising page will pay for Brandy's medical bills plus the cost of transporting the dog to her former owner in Florida. Anything left over will go to charity. As of Monday evening, more than 150 people had contributed to the effort, raising 7385 Suzanne had her goal at 4500 Superintendent releases following students drowning. After 12 years, old Ryan drowned on a field trip in Lewiston School District is making changes to its procedures to help ensure student safety in the future. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 Maine.
the school board meeting Monday night, Lewiston Superintendent Bill Webster delivering the first of a two-part report from the school's investigation into the drowning of Rion Issa. Unfortunately, um, after the fact, uh, we've learned a lot and are learning more about what we should and should not be doing in terms of field trip procedures. The 12-page report detailing what was included in the permission slip signed by Issa's family and what investigators believe happened the morning of June 12. The second phase or second part of the investigation will include a series of recommendations. And part of the reason they're not yet available is the focus has been on gathering these facts. The superintendent also issuing a directive on how field trips will be handled effective immediately, including prohibiting swimming on any school-sponsored trips. Among the other procedures, a standardized permission slip translated into Somali, the identification of all risks and what the school is doing to mitigate them, and the implementation of safety talks and the buddy system. You shouldn't be allowed to swim at all. Fausia Muse is a parent, and although she is pleased with many of the steps the district is taking, says if they can't guarantee kids' safety, they shouldn't be taking trips at all. When they send the permission slips, very often, you know, insinuates and promise that your kid will be returned safe to you. Yeah, though. It's tragic, and I think we should learn from that. And moving forward, I think they should have uh, stronger policy and procedures in place. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Trump says he's surprised by Harley Davidson moving some productions over. President Donald Trump said Monday he was surprised by Harley Davidson announcement that it will move some of its production out of the U.S. to avoid European Union tariffs. Makeshift tent city houses hundreds of migrant teens. Inside a makeshift tent city in Texas for migrant teens, a reporter saw drawings on walls of youth sleeping quarters, including one that read 100% Honduran traveled 10,000 kilometers to reach the U.S. The tent city near the U.S. border with Mexico is less than 3,000 kilometers from Honduras, or about 1,700 miles, but for the as many as 326 migrant youth staying at the facility alone without their parents, it may feel like even further. And that does it for the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.